when you synchronize carburetors uh, using this or any other method, um, all you're really doing is adjusting when these um, butterfly valves here, when they open in relation to each other. Um, this is the bench sync method, and what this does is it basically puts these carburetors back to, say, factory stock, or back to their baseline, so that they all open at the exact same time. Um, this can be useful, uh, for example, if you're restoring a bike, and um, you've just finished working on the carbs, and you're about to put it back on the bike, you know, you can do this method, or if you're having a hard time using a dynamic sync, um, you know, using, you know, syncing the, the carbs while they're still on the bike. Um, you can just put it back to, to the baseline. Um, if you do this, your bike, and you don't have any other problems, your bike will probably run well, um, but not perfectly. Um, in order to get you know, a perfectly tuned bike, you have to do a dynamic sync. This is not a replacement for that. Um, and that's because as your bike wears, uh, your valves are going to wear at different rates, and your, um, your piston rings are going to wear at different rates. You're going to have slightly different compression in each cylinder. And so each car body needs to be synchronized to its mating cylinder. Um, so just putting them back to baseline is not going to get you uh, exactly where you need to be. However, it's still a great, um, still a great technique and um, guys use it, you know, all the time. I do this all the time. Pretty much every time I, uh, I clean an unfamiliar set of carburetors, I will uh, um, do a bench sink on them. So this is how it's done. Alright, now this is just a uh, inline twin set of carbs off of a GS450. Um, the procedure is pretty much the same for inline fours or V-twins or V-fours or whatever. It just looks a little bit different and uh, your linkage is set up a little bit different. But um, as you can see here, I have two carb bodies. This one right here is adjusted using the idle knob. So as you can see, I'm turning the idle knob, and I'm and this little sliver of light in there is getting bigger. I'll turn it back, and it's reducing the idle and closing it off. So that's how that one works. There we go. And once I set that to where I need it to be, I set this one using this uh, this um adjustment screw right here and this is the same if I had this on the bike you know and I was doing a dynamic sync this is the same place that I would adjust it but so what you do is you first you set your idle now I uh, guys use all different types of things some people use like a little sliver of paper some people use a very tiny drill bit um, I like to use a needle it really doesn't matter what you use because um, even if it's you know really thick or really thin you can always adjust the idle afterwards, and I'll explain what I mean by that. But so what I do is I take this needle, and I'm going to stick it right down in here, so it just slides underneath the uh, um, the butterfly valve. Right now it gets stuck, so I need to open it up a little bit more. Now you want to be careful. You definitely don't want to smash it or anything. You don't want to damage your venturi, which is this opening here. You don't want to uh, damage your butterfly valve. Right now I have it so this can slide in and out. See, that's real good. It slides in and out, and um, it's not stuck, so I'm going to remember that. Slides in and out. All right. Now I'm going to go over here to the other one. This one, it looks like, is open too far. Yeah, I can see there's all kinds of room in there. So, what I'm going to do, take my screwdriver, and I'm going to screw it down. It's kind of an awkward angle. in it the wrong way. Alright, now I've screwed it down a little bit. What some guys will do is they'll put something hard like this in here and then they'll screw down 
the adjustment screw onto it. I don't typically like to do that just because it's easy to smash your, uh, you know, your your butterfly valve down on your on your needle or whatever or on your venturi. Um, so I just do a little adjustment and then go in there and feel and do a little adjustment, and go in there and feel. But you guys can do whatever you want. I think that I adjusted it too far. So we're gonna go back. And this is sort of a delicate process, so you know, take your time at it. And we'll see. There you go, perfect. And there's the same amount of freedom in there that I had on the other one. Yeah. So that's a bench stake. Um, if you put this on the bike and you find that you're idle is too high, then just go ahead and adjust it using your idle knob right here. That's fine because now these two butterfly valves are going to operate exactly in unison. Um, like I said, uh, this is going to get your, uh, your carbs and your bike pretty much where they need to be, but you really should consider uh, doing a dynamic sync after that. Um, oh yeah, don't forget to tighten down your retaining nut. Once you do that, always recheck. Good. Um, if you have inline four carbs, then um, your setup might vary a little bit, but the technique is pretty much the same. Um, what uh, usually works for a lot of carbs is you synchronize like the one and two carbs, and then the three and four carbs, and then you try and synchronize the two sets to each other, and they require a little bit of playing around. This one's really easy because it's just a simple setup. But, um, you know, get your repair manual out, uh, see what it says about this, um, and uh, that's definitely a better resource than this generic set of carbs. So, if you guys have any questions about this, let me know.